Hello everyone and welcome back to Theme Park Workshop. I'm here with Adam. Hi. <laughs> Apparently he's caffeinated now, uh -huh. but you can tell that we're real Universal fans because that wasn't Joffrey's coffee. But anyways, we're here today to review the latest Universal Orlando attraction, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. And don't tell us that we're late to this review because Hagrid's is still having technical issues and closing early. So clearly it's still practically in technical Not the bees are, not the bees are. <laughs> Yeah, they've been having some major problems with bees, but thankfully, it's not birds. So, <laughs> shall we get into our review of Packard's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure? Sure. So as you guys may remember from our previous video when we talked about Gringotts and Forbidden Journey, we had six categories that we used to judge and evaluate those rides. So we're gonna put Hagrid's through the exact same paces as those rides. But first of all, first impressions coming off Hagrid's, what'd you think? Uh, yeah, so when I went on the first time, it was around the time when it opened, and didn't think I was gonna get on it at all because it was, you know, a wicked way. It was like three hours and all that. And you don't do that on a family vacation. Um, but, you know, by, by goodwill and all that, we got on in like a two hour wait, I think. Um, and really dug it. It's a lot of fun. Um, especially, like, even if you're not on the motorbike, because if you're in the motorbike seat, that's like what you think you're in it for. But just wherever you are, it's just a really fun time and a real exciting time. Feels like you're on a, a bike, not just a roller coaster. It is really a ride like, no other at Universal or even Disney. I think it, spoiler alert, I think it puts it over the edge of just about almost every attraction. It's certainly Orlando. better than uh, It's a Small World. Is that saying that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did think the sound was a little bit quiet, couldn't quite make out. On repeat rides, it gets better. I don't know if that's just, I'm, I know what to listen for, I know what to pay attention to. But it did make the story a little hard to, to follow then, but going on multiple times, uh, it's not really issue anymore and then everything just feels more whole but going through the queue seeing the pre-show i don't know if we're going to talk about the pre-show later on um but yeah just everything felt really good really new really fresh really exciting uh and it's only gotten better since yeah so for me i actually rode it the same night as adam despite trying to go two nights previous but both times i was turned down because i couldn't get off work early and so i get to the park and it was already closed for the day there was one time I did go and I made it into the line and I waited five hours and the ride got shut down for the night. And so they gave me one of the special Ruby passes, but I still ended up waiting for it with Adam because our trips just happened to go on the same day. And I thought it was pretty amazing. At nighttime, so many of the effects Oh yeah, we're like so second row. You were first row. I was front row. Um, I was second row and it was at night. That's yeah. the first ride. That's like the best time to, I don't know if there's a best, that's a great time no, to ride. No, it's, it's the best time to ride. Nighttime, yeah. for me personally, is the best time to ride Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Try saying that five times fast. I have, it didn't go well. But anyways, yeah. So nighttime is the best. I got front row. It was an absolute blast. There's, I mean, there's no other roller coaster quite like it. It puts Cheetah Hunt to shame, honestly, in my opinion, as far as launch coasters in Florida with an extremely long track length go. That's a very narrow, uh, very niche category. <laughs> <laughs> launch coasters with long tracks in Florida. Um, Hagrid's is up there, and boy, does it wipe the competition away. <laughs> it's a very close race, but it's like two. I mean, that was like Dueling Dragons and Montu, like the best inverted coaster in Florida. I mean, what competition do you have? Flight School at Legoland, which is a major thumbs down. And I uh, bet that. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. And Tyrannodon Flyers, which... I've not done it. <laughs> I mean, that's more of a suspended. I'm, I'm too inverted. tall, too old, and too fat. Well, now that our first impressions are out of the way, uh, we're going to go on into the next, uh, the next into the six categories. Uh, the first being story. So in, in Hagrid's Magical Creatures, we are students in his Magical Creature, Care of Magical uh, Creatures uh, class, and this lesson is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a bit exciting, um, and we go into a new new setting, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later. A new setting uh, in the Harry Potter universe, an abandoned castle that's kind of like a hangout spot 
um, kind of like a, a secret, like in, in Dead Poet Society. If you've seen Dead Poet Society, they've got that dent that they go in and read the Dead Poets uh, work and, you know, Carpe Diem and, and all that jazz. It's like that, but for wizards and witches and ghouls. Actually, there is a ghoul in it, uh, a resident ghoul. Um, yeah, if you if you heard that for 30 minutes while you're in that room, it was very wonderful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to do a lesson. We're going to try to find some blasted and scroots, but the, they're pretty far off. And Hagrid wants to show us one. And so he and Arthur Weasley, of all people, uh, duplicate Sirius, is, uh, Sirius Black's uh, motorbike, famous motorbike. And because uh, we're going to go on a lesson uh, on those, and we'll see the scroot. But as always, this is a universal ride, and things go terribly wrong, and we end up careening into the forbidden forest. Uh, and go on a, not forbidden journey, but a dangerous journey. And explore new things, and learn new things, and have a lot of fun, and maybe even find a unicorn. Uh, again, so, and I think I'll just go right into the evaluation. I think it's a low stakes story, especially for Universal, where every ride there seems to have like uh, a story where everything is uh, Death defying, things are gonna go terribly wrong. E.T.'s planet needs to be saved. Yeah, people are dying. Fast and Furious are gonna get killed by some random dude from the franchise. Luke Evans, Owen Shaw, Family Forever. Uh, and then like Transformers, the, uh, the Septicons are coming, the world will blow up if you don't stop them. Uh, I think, honestly, you've got Hagrid which is let's find some magical creatures and s survive a perilous flight. And then the next less, you know, insane story is Spider-Man's in New York. That's, you know, the Sinister Six stole the Statue of Liberty. That is how extreme Universal is. So to see a more mild story, I think it's refreshing. It, uh, it's not so much that I feel overwhelmed or anything or stressed when I go to Universal, because I love Universal. But just having a ride that its story is fun, I think it's different. And uh, I really enjoy that, that they took a different angle. But it's still meaningful, I think. Yeah. And it's still great for this kind of ride. I think, yeah, you pretty much summarized my thoughts on this story. One thing that I appreciate is uh, within the queue, a lot of the things that are set up get paid off. If I had to hear about Dragonfire one more time in the queue, I think I might have barfed, but <laughs> don't ask me how it works. It just works like that. Dragonfire. But he's like, ah, Tom, Dragonfire worked, Arthur. And then that's in the pre-show, and then it's in the roof pre-show. And then finally when you get to the other, he's like, push those purple buttons. And you, you see they have a really cool dragon fire effect on the side. Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, Hagrid talks about blast ended scroots in the line, and he talks about, well, maybe we'll see a unicorn if I can lure one out. And that's the very last thing on the ride, which is kind of that last punch to really conclude the narrative of the ride. So I really appreciate the fact that even if it's smaller stuff, there is the setup and payoff there. And there's a, a police car, fire truck in the background. But yeah, I think Hagrid's does an excellent job uh, with setups and payoffs, which is something that uh, you can't say for a Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Oh, I don't know about that. They do set up a lot. They set up the Quidditch match? Yeah. That's about it. Okay, fair enough. The Dementors kind of come out of nowhere. There's no like, oh, it's oh supposed to be a Dementors are, are uh, Roman Hogwarts today. There's no, uh, I mean, because well, they're not supposed to be. It's supposed I guess to be a shot. there's the smallest setup and payoff where Hagrid's like, "Haven't seen a dragon, have you?" And then five seconds later, we get the payoff. Hagrid, the dragon. Fair enough. But I digress. Yeah, it's it is building up towards that Quidditch match, and then things go wrong. Right. Because that's one of those terribly go wrong stories. Because there is, it's a that's a fight for survival and the greatest hits of Harry Potter. So I think that story operates kind of differently. We've we've said before. I think we said in our video. That Forbidden Journey doesn't have the greatest of stories. So I think Hagrid's story is much more cohesive than Forbidden Journeys, especially with regards to the narrative. It's like one thing happens, it's like, okay, we're going to see the Scroots. We saw the Scroots, but the Scroot acted up, which moves us into a nice little romp flying around. Then, you know, the bikes get sent off course. Then we pass by Fluffy. Then the bikes, you know, like it all, it all has a very nice progression, which ends in the payoff with the dragon fire, which was set up from the beginning. Yeah. And not to mention the pacing of the ride is excellent, where it builds and then it doesn't, like a lot of roller coasters lose their steam by the end, mm -hmm. but this one saves the biggest launch for last. And I really appreciate that. Like we've had all this fun doing smaller launches. And then of course, to top the showstopper 
drop track, we get the fastest launch of the ride alongside the really cool dragon fire effect. And then we get one of the best animatronics on the ride, which is the unicorn at the end. So I really think they pulled off an excellent finale for a ride, which is really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we compared it to Forbidden Journey already, talking about how um, Forbidden Journey is kind of, it feels high stakes because it's a fight for survival, whereas this is just seeing some unicorns and seeing some magical creatures. Um, but yeah, it does feel more cohesive than that. So I think on a story level, there's only one champion in Hans Mead. Uh, but going to Diagon Alley and checking out Escape from Grim Gods, um, what do you think has the better story? Um, I think, I still think Escape from Grim Gods has the better story because it's just, it combines those high stakes action packedness with, um, there's also more characters that the ride balances really well, and I like that um, the locations of those characters are consistent versus something, yeah, we, we talked about this in the video, but Forbidden Journey has major character location issues um, that Gringotts yeah. simply doesn't have. That's true. Um, and Gringotts also gives you a really nice introduction to the characters in the pre-show. I mean, Arthur becomes kind of irrelevant once you get on the ride, which doesn't really hurt the ride. But if you look at, you know, Gringotts, you have Bill and Blordak, and they're both crucial to the Blordak. narrative on uh, Escape from Gringotts. So yeah. I still, think, I still think Escape from Gringotts, and Escape from Gringotts also manages to be paced really well and pull off a showstopper finale. So I would say uh, Gringotts still gets the story for me. Just to expand on the endings a little bit more, oh, yeah. um, Gringotts ends with you saying goodbye to Bill and the conclusion to the background story with Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and then Bill closes it off with the joke, which is very in character. Hagrid's ends with you looking at the unicorns, listening to the soft music, and Hagrid saying, well, that was a wonderful day, make sure not to tell anybody back at Hogwarts about this. And then he kind of chuckles and says, see you next time, and it's like really sweet. How does Forbidden Journey end? Forbidden Journey ends with a goodbye, and then you spend like 10 seconds in front of a green screen as you're lightly tilted up, and then he's like, oh, make sure to retrieve your stowed belongings, or they'll get confiscated by Mr. Filch, and you're being told this by Dumbledore, who you just saw at the end of the ride. I mean, sure, you saw him in the queue. Yeah. But like- You can't understand what he says, but he's there. Yeah, it's it's just, it's, it's the conclusion of Forbidden Journey, if it ended with you passing by the characters and then unloading, that would be fine, and I get why you need to have the flu powder for narrative purposes, but at the same- And then Dumbledore for security purposes. At the same time, it's just like, the no, but the last flu powder scene isn't convincing for anybody. I mean, it's it's barely a tilt. It's, yeah. it's just one of those where I'm like- You can see the unload station. Yeah, you can see the extra unload station for disabilities. I just think uh, Gringotts and Hagrid's both have a better ending scene than Forbidden Journey. But, uh, what are your thoughts? On Gringotts versus, uh, Motorbike Adventure? Uh, just overall. Overall? Uh, well, to touch on Gringotts versus, uh, Hagrid's, um, I think I prefer Hagrid's. That doesn't necessarily mean it's better, they're just, they're, they're different. And yeah. I think, I appreciate, I think it's a palate cleanser. I think it's a palate cleanser to have something so low stakes, but also that puts you in the center, because I feel like, even off Forbidden Journey, you're kind of a spectator. You're the one experiencing everything, but... Where you been? Snitch! Follow me! Yeah, you're there to see Harry. You're there to see the Dementors. Whereas... And Gringotts says, okay, you're going to see the breakout happen. You're involved, and characters talk to you, but it does feel like a very passive experience. Um, whereas in Hagrid's, it does put you in the middle of it, and I think... If we're going with immersive storytelling, which is what Universal's been trying to do since at least 2010, more so uh, when Diagon Alley opened up, I think, and when Skull Island and Volcano Bay, their thing is immersive storytelling. I think part of that immersion, which Galaxy's yeah, Edge is trying to make you do, is make you a part of the story. Right. And I think Hagrid's does that a lot, way better than Gringotts and definitely Forbidden uh, Journey. I think as far as a traditional story goes, Gringotts is great. I, I love the story, the storytelling of Gringotts. I love that everyone gets to experience the pre-show. I yeah. think we're gonna, are we gonna touch on that? Later? Yeah, we're gonna touch on that a little bit. Okay, so hold off on that. Yeah, and everything feels vital in Gringotts. I rode Gringotts without the queue one time, and I'm like, oh, I didn't realize how much that added to the experience. While I miss, while I think the pre-show of Hagrid's really helps with the pacing of the storytelling, uh, where it makes that 40 minutes 
that your 90 minutes that you're waiting afterwards is a lot more bearable because you've got that momentum, you've got that excitement. Right. That pre-show isn't the most necessary thing. Because you see the pixies, you see the dragon fire, you hear about the unicorn, but you don't, uh, that doesn't necessarily play in uh, in a vital way like the things in Green Gods. Right. Thing. Okay, so expectations. When you go into the ride, the first thing that it sets up is obviously you're gonna see magical creatures and it's gonna be a motorbike adventure based on the name. We've discussed yeah. how Fast and Furious only- Supercharged. Yeah, only fulfills one of its three naming things, which is Furious. Oh. <laughs> yes, you come off Furious, but you do not go fast and it's certainly not supercharged. I like it. Anyways. Uh, I also like the cat in the hat and Solo Sue. Me. You, also, <laughs> you also do get to see Hagrid, which I think is really yeah. cool. Um, Cause I actually heard when I was in line, I heard some guests saying, "Do you think Hagrid's actually going to appear on the ride?" And one of the guests was like, "Well, if he does, it's probably going to be a screen." And I, was, I didn't correct them because I was like, "Oh, you're going to be surprised when you actually get to see Hagrid." Yeah. But I think that's you know that's the expectation that Universal has created is if you see an actor, it's going to be on a screen, which is a really nice change of pace for them. Indeed. Yeah. So uh, it definitely meets all the expectations from the name when you go into the queue. It's set up. I like they actually explain how the bikes are being multiplied. Um, mm -hmm. So your expectation is, you know, it's going to be a wild motorbike ride. You look at the track, it's fairly easy to see. This is a lot different than Forbidden Journey or Gringotts, where your expectations are a lot murkier. They're only really only based on, like, the pre-shows because, you know, it's an indoor ride, so you can't see any of it from the outside. Um, and we talked about how, you know, Gringotts has the huge roller coaster thing from the movies, so yeah. you're thinking, oh, this has got to be a roller coaster of sorts. Watching um, the movie, like, oh, that's going to be right at Universal Studios. Right. And it is. Yeah. Exactly. And then, uh, making Cat in the Hat reference. And, no. Anyways. <laughs> oh, yeah! Anyways, uh, anyways, yeah, so expectations. I think this lives up to and definitely exceeds expectations because they do hide the drop track. You don't expect the devil's snare. No. But you would expect that going into the Forbidden Forest once you learn that that's where you're going. Um, and you see pretty much everything that you expect on the ride. Now, do you see the, uh, what are the little creatures called from Fantastic yes. Beasts and where to find oh, them? Oh, the Nifflers? Nifflers, yeah. They have the, a poster of those in the queue. Yeah, they yeah. do. They don't show those. Um, you do see the fire salamanders in the pre-show. Screws? No, no, the fire salamanders. Oh. Like the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They come out and Hagrid's like, but I wasn't planning to show those to you today. I forgot they announced those. Yeah. Anyways, I'd say expectations absolutely meets and if not it, it definitely it meets and exceeds any expectations that you have going in yeah i'd say it definitely meets expectations uh it's a well with the name it meets the things you hear in the name but the quality of the name i mean then again i can't think of a better name for it at the moment and i've been thinking trying to think of a better name and it's hard it's just a really clustered name it's uh, i don't know is clustered the right word it's a crowded name. It's a murky, not murky. Uh, it's a muddled long name. It's a muddled long name. Um, and so like, oh, well, I mean, it sounds like it, I remember leading up to it, like, it sounds like it's gonna be exciting, but that title. And then you write it, and then you don't even care about the title anymore, because it is the best right at Universal Studios. I think also they did the best they could, because you can either call it two things. You can call it Hagrid's Magical Creatures Adventure, or Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. And so on the sign for the marquee of the ride, because it's Hagrid's Magical Creatures class, the, what's emphasized is Hagrid's Magical Creatures and then Motorbike Adventures in small print. But when they put it on the billboards, they put Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure and then Magical Creatures is in small print. So yeah. it allows them to change it based on, you know, where it's gonna be more important as far as theming. Yeah. Um, and I agree with everything you said about expectations, but the one expectation that, and again, I think it's the best ride at Universal and I think it's the second best ride in Orlando. I'm partial to the Haunted Mansion, nothing will ever top that for me, but Hagrid's comes pretty darn close. Um, and it's not even a comparison that, uh, with this expectation, it's just when you see the movies and you see these magical creatures in action, when you see the magical creatures in action in the pre-show, you expect all the magical creatures to move, and they don't. Um, like this the Pixies, I, under, I was trying to think, how are they going to pull off the Pixies? How are they going to make those things fly as animatronics? So remember, they showed the the in the uh, early reveal stuff on social media, it was like physical pixies. They weren't moving. I thought, oh, maybe they'll, they'll move on the ride. They just hold them back a little bit. They don't. That one doesn't matter as much because you go past it so fast. 
but when you go into the Forbidden Forest show building, you look up to your right, going backwards, and you see a centaur. That centaur is still a stone because guess what? It is stone and there was no basilisk. Hashtag budget cuts. Um, and I don't even know if that's what it was, or they just thought, oh, it's in passing. Because actually I went out with someone, she didn't even notice that there was a centaur. Because she was thinking all the other things. There's so much to look at in that show building. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's why they did it. I, w I would have appreciated a little bit more movement. And I, it feels cheap because in Forbidden Journey, well again, it's a classic ride. It's a really good ride. I'd say on a really good day it's a great ride. Um, but the, um, the Dementors are very cheap. This is true. They feel cheap. But you still buy it because it's Harry Potter. Um, and there, there are a couple of other things, in the, like spiders. You can see the strings on the spiders. Again, you buy it because it's Harry Potter. And then you do the same thing on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Oh, they're bats. I didn't realize the bats were. Anywho. Um, but yeah, the, the fact that that carried over nine years later, it's a bit disappointing to me that, oh, it's a huge extravaganza of practical effects. Because they went all out on Kong, even with the bats on, on those. That but we can't um, even make these this basic centaur. The centaur go, like, you can even just do that. Just do that, you know, move One like axis that. of movement. Uh, so that's a little disappointing, but as far as yeah, the thrill goes, it met and exceeded every thrill. Even though I knew what was going to happen, I didn't know how I was going to feel going up a spike. I didn't know how I was going to feel with the track drop. And just the fact of being on a motorcycle or a motorbike car, and it feels like you're on a motorbike car, blew them out of the way. In fact, you're like by the water. Such a cool effect. It's, some, it's, it's the most magical feeling in a Harry Potter. More magical than using a wand, honestly. Riding in the sidecar, as you're doing that, the largest curb over the lake, if the oh, water's yeah. like crystal clear, you can just see your reflection as you're flying over the water. And it is, it truly is magical. I mean, there's nothing else like it. Yeah. Um, so I'd say, yeah, exceeded and met a lot of my expectations going into it. Except for the animatronic, or except for the except for the statue, yeah. except for the except for the I don't want to say they're ET because they look really good. They just they're not active, and that takes me out of it just a slight bit. And then you turn a corner and you're going ET down. Go to yeah, but yeah, that's that's my take on the expectations. Yeah, again, it doesn't. I think it's still a ten out of ten ride, even though there's that those minor complaints like that. Yeah, yeah. Because then you see a unicorn at the end, and those are both moving. And if that if that was just a statue, there would be that major would, issues for me. Yeah. Entrance, it's not Hogwarts and it's not Gringotts. I'm sorry. The actual entrance to the ride, this is definitely on the down and down compared to Forbidden Journey and Gringotts. I wouldn't say it doesn't fit the tone of the ride or the theme because you know obviously Hagrid isn't gonna have like a massive tower saying this is magical creatures class, but at the same time. You know, it's not it's not impressive. I mean, it's just an archway. I mean, it does look cool at night, but I mean, so does Hogwarts. Am I right? No, that's why it's lit up. Um, I disagree. I like the entrance, and I think it adds a different kind of flavor to Hogsmeade. Why I like it is because it's something we haven't seen in the movies before, but still feels, or even the books, but it still feels in the spirit of it. Uh, it adds some new wrinkles of mythology. The, I think it's called the Green Man. You can see that little statue? Yeah. I have no idea what that is, but boy, it gets me thinking. As we talked about in the first video, I like rides that spur my imagination. Right, you like the ambiguous, the avant-garde. It's, it's not so much avant-garde, it's just ambiguous. It's just, it's nothing they really explain, but it adds to the atmosphere. Um, yeah, it's not as memorable as Hogwarts, sure, and it's not as, um, it's not as key to the. It's not like a. It's not a weenie like um, Green, Green Guys. Um, and our, we're just talking about like that archway. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a good way to use the old dragon challenge thing and yeah. make it its own thing. Um, so yeah, it's not the best entrance, but it's not a bad entrance. It's since still a really the, good entrance. Since Banshee brought it up, uh, we have to mention the lockers at Hagrid's are. Eons better than Forbidden Journeys or Gringotts. Because it dealt with it from Dragon Challenge, yeah. Yeah, well, and they also built the new set of lockers. Yeah, that's what I mean, So, yeah, they separate the lockers, which is great because you divide the flow. And in addition, they're both almost entirely open air, 
Yeah. Um, which means you can have breeze flowing in and out versus Forbidden Journeys, which are super stuffy, and Gringotts, which are also super stuffy. Um, and they actually, so far, they smell pretty okay. Um, that might change as time goes on. But I think Hagrid's definitely apt as the lockers of Forbidden Journey and Gringotts. Yeah. So on to the queue. Um, the queue, and this has been talked about by a lot of people, is very unique. Um, because you have the pre-show before what amounts to about an hour of the wait. So by placing the pre-show so early into the experience, it it's very unique. I guess we have to start with the queue opens up, you get a nice view of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, which I think is really cool. Is that cool. the Black Lake? That's not the Black Lake. Oh. Black Lake would have been on the other side, but it's still nice. I mean, yeah. I like that, you know, you're kind of wandering through the forest, you pass Hagrid's hut, you get to see the other side. The sound design... That's probably the coolest part of the outdoor portion of the queue, where it feels... It makes Hogsmeade feel whole in a way. Yeah. Instead of just one long street you're actually going behind a, a ride. You're going behind right. Fly the Hippogriff because Hagrid's Hut is there. So I think that's one of the more ingenious things about the outdoor portion of the queue. And there's other things in there, like that tower. I don't know what they are. I don't know. The tower is actually for the light show. Oh, okay. It's just, it's not really anything, so to speak. But. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't realize that. I just thought yeah. it was a cool little uh, tidbit. It doesn't distract me from the queue. I, yeah, it's well obviously themed. I thought it was part of the theme. Yeah, yeah, because it's themed to the the queue. Right. Um, but yeah, the fact that you're able to go behind Hagrid's hut because actually the background of my phone is Hagrid's hut on the front side. It's really cool to go to the back side and see the pumpkins and all the crops. And I think it's a scarecrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it makes that back area feel lived in, which you don't get at theme parks a whole lot, right. where you're basically behind another ride. I think the only other one that comes to mind is the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind at California Adventure. It's like in the middle of the Incredicoaster. Um, and that's that's different than it Still this. should have been called the Mood Swings, but I digress. Yeah, but yeah, as far as the outside portion goes, I like that, that feels more. Yeah, and the sound design outside is really good too, so you're like hearing creatures just, you know, off the beaten path. Um, and they also put a nice little, uh, what are they called? Food kiosks in line when it gets super long so you have something to purchase. Yeah, you don't have that too much anymore. Um, and I don't think you'll have it again for a while. Yeah. If at all. Um, it depends on how well they get the ride working. But yeah. True. So then you see the pre-show, which I think it's about on par with the Gringotts pre-show as far as actual quality. The CG effects are excellent. Um, the acting is really good. It's very impressive that they did the force perspective and everything in what looks like one take. They might have had masked edits, but... I don't know if it was a masked edit, but like, it might actually be two different shots. Like, or they could different have, shots they could have merged together. filled some some frame, they could have filled in some like in-betweens with CG if they needed to, I think. Sure, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I really like the pre-show. It's the clearest pre-show. Um, and it's the first pre-show I know of that has effects. Uh, you get wet on this ride, and it's not on the ride, it's in the pre-show room. Because uh, you know Universal loves its water, and yes. uh, with Harry Potter, they love their Aquamanti. Uh, oh, that was a t Aquamanti. Aquamanti. I, I thought I would try to slur that, and that did not work out. <laughs> I sound like a moron. Uh, an ignorance. Uh, cut that. Please, God, cut that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think it's the best pre-show Universal stuff, to be honest. I like the Gringotts one, but I like Hagrid's just a bit more. Yeah. And I is, it as is, it as, is it as vital as Gringotts to the story of the ride? No. No, in fact, a lot so. of times they just funnel you through the pre-show and they don't hate even that. play it. I hate that. I know why they do it, <laughs> so people aren't waiting outside for a long time. Because um, I'll get into that in a second. Um, so they want to fill up that latter portion of the queue. Um, the downside is you miss out on a really special pre-show, I think. Yeah. I think that they should have placed the pre-show a lot later in the ride. I mean, it's unique where it is, but I don't think it helps with the pacing. Especially when you have to be in the egg room for so long, and then, you know, they had to add the AC there, so the queue clearly wasn't designed well for AC, so it gets points docked off for that. And then you go through the caves, and people are always like, how long do these caves go? Because if it's your first time going through the queue, you don't really know, they could go on forever. Mm -hmm. But then once you get to, I think, the Hagrid's workshop room, where you see his gloves and his table, I think, 
once you get to that point, the, and the queue, textbook pages. The queue is pretty well paced from that point on, but I think up until then, like I almost wish you had done, because Hagrid's like telling you, go meet at the stables, and then it takes you an hour to get to the stables. Like even a remote assumption, like it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense from a story perspective. Like if you had managed to put the pre-show right before the Hagrid's workshop, that would have made sense, because Hagrid's going right from his workshop into this other room to talk to you and then you're going into his workshop and then you funnel through the caves and then you meet in the last of the stables area where you see you know all the stuff happening above your head. I think having the pre-show that early, which again it's not a thing most theme parks do, having the pre-show that early I think keeps the momentum up during those less um, less immer or less exciting portions of the queue. Like I like the egg room. I think it's something new and different. That fireplace is like, oh wow, I'm in a new part of this story world. Um, the caves that were left over from Dragon Challenge, that is the worst part of yeah. the queue. No one's arguing that. No one's saying, you know what I really like? I love the caves. Yeah, I slept in those caves during my first five hour wait when I didn't get to ride. I actually fell asleep. So, I mean, I have an emotional attachment to them now. They provide me a place of solace. Solace. But yes, yes, the caves are, are the worst part. Of yeah, but I think that pre-show and having it so early, like, oh man, we're going to see some magical creatures, we're going to see a unicorn, a screw, oh, pixies maybe? What's dragon for? Are you going to do motorbike? Are you going to do sidecar? Motorbike, sidecar, motorbike? You're talking about that for the That's next true. half hour, 20 minutes. If you left the pre-show until the end, I feel like that wait would have felt a lot worse. Yeah. Um, so I... It's a weird place to put it, especially on the on the front side of the waiting because you're waiting outside and you don't know why it seems like it's really long but it's just because the they're pulsing you up. through yeah the queue's backed up because of the pre-show room so yeah the pacing of the queue i think it's not as good because i like the build that gringotts has you get the huge reveal then you go down you get the picture taken like once you get inside the actual gringotts building there's kind of always something for you to look at and it's never there's no Gringotts equivalent to the caves. Like even when you're in the office area, you know, on the on the doors you see Harry, Ron, and Hermione talking about their plans yeah. uh, with Lordak. And like you can interact with the person who's monitoring the wait to get into the pre-show. Because you're in like a larger group. It's not like That's a super fun to interact with them. single file line. It's not um, really to interact too with the Hagrid's queue. With Hagrid's, except right. Except for the people who are blocking Express. And then obviously, you know, you get the pre-show, you get the elevator. Like it, it builds really well. This is true, I forgot about that. And even in the extended queue, you also have like, you know, Hagrid's his Hagrid's hut. In the Gringotts extended queue, you have the posters that you can read as well as the uh, actual car from the movies if it gets really long. Yeah. So that's really cool. And with Forbidden Journey, I know uh, we talked about the queue a lot, and I think that was when we, we gave it equal in our last yeah. video. Uh, but the pacing for that is so great, because you know, you enter Hogwarts Castle. Now, is the greenhouse good? No, it's, it's really not. Good but, music. Yeah, it's on Very like, loud. It's on like a five minute loop. Yeah. It gets a little... Oh, we're getting copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, but when you get into the castle, the pacing is nice. You go, there's always yeah. stuff to look at. Gringotts, or not Gringotts, uh, Hagrid. Hagrid's, just, it just can't compete. Yeah, and even, even the parts where it does try to do interesting things, like the final safety spiel with the motorbikes overhead, a lot of people complain because it's too loud. You can't hear what you're- You've heard complaints? Yeah. Okay. You can't, well, even, even I think it's a little too loud. Like, it's very hard to even talk to people next to you when you hear the as they're going around on the ceiling. Now, get, don't get me wrong, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. And the shadow effect, I it's think, is done really It's not something I've seen in a queue before. And I That's like true, it. it is very unique to Hagrid. And it's one way to avoid video screens, which I think is what they've been trying to avoid with um, the Harry Potter rides, because video screens, except if they're moving portraits, those aren't part of the Wizarding World. Wizarding world. And neither are actually uh, electric lights, which I think is one of their hardest commitments to do, is there's no yeah. electric lights. Uh, anywhere. Yeah, I forgot about how there's something to look at. Like, every part of the queue in Forbidden Journey and especially Green Gods, those are all show scenes. They feel like show scenes. Right. Uh, I think the only downtime in Green Gods is the exterior queue, which admittedly I haven't experienced a whole lot because I'm either doing express Well, usually the wait, too, is actually, it usually doesn't balloon up so that, you, it, so that you're not in the back part of the line. Too yeah, it's much, not like unless podcast. it's like a busy day. Yeah. Um, and other than that, I think the worst part of the queue is the stairwell. But 
I mean, in comparison, it's not that long. Yeah. Um, it's not as long as the caves. Um, yeah, everything is... You're right. Bringouts does have better pacing than Hagrid's, because while I do appreciate the new stuff about it, I think it's a great way to revamp the Dragon Challenge queue. Or, not revamp, but... Uh, rework. Yeah, rework and adapt to it. Um, and it's something new. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like something new is happening in story development. Right. There's, the, there's almost the story no doesn't really story develop though. to the queue. The story starts the pre-show, and then really it's your experience from then on seeing these things, deciding motorbike sidecar. Because I know it takes me the entire line to decide really. Um, and then the story comes back in the big show space with the silhouette. Right. Um, which again, as I mentioned, I think is a interesting and different way to get around that. I still don't know exactly how they do that effect, to be honest. I have ideas, but I don't know exactly how. I'm, maybe it's just a really tall, you know, uh, reverse projector where the yeah. projector is like really high up and it's projecting on the screen and we can see the backside of that. That's probably all it is. I still think it's really neat and it's like, oh, how do they do that? And I've never seen that effect broken either, which I think is a testament to. Yeah whatever they chose to go with for it. This is true. So yeah, I think that's the cue. Is it as good as Forbidden Journey or Gringotts? Not for me, but Universal definitely tried their best and there is some unique things within the cue. So it's not it's not like Flight of the Hippogriff's cue where they put a Hagrid recording on a 60 second loop. Yeah. I think I think if you are gonna go on it, definitely the first time, go in standby. Because while maybe it's not the best Harry Potter cue, it's a great cue. I think. There's lots of Easter eggs. There's the Triwizard Literally, Tournament egg. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got all those Easter eggs. Um, you've got the the magical creature pages in the workshop, which again, nothing we've really seen before in Harry Potter. You've got the the abandoned castle, which I still want J.K. Rowling to talk about that instead of wizards, you know, pooping and then cleaning up their crap. Uh, with magic. Yeah, old Hogwarts. It's it's adds to the Harry Potter lore, which is really cool. And the actual exterior facade of the castle, I don't think we talked about, but that's yeah. like really cool. Yeah. Um, it's not as impressive, but it's beautiful in its own way. And I, I like that Universal <clears throat> has broken the rules. They're not married as much to the lore. They're more married to the idea. And I think that's why the ride in general succeeds. You know, Forbidden Journey was... For, actually, Forbidden Journey is all about the feeling of, you know, getting all the the plot, you know, the plot points of Harry Potter all in one ride. Oh, there's Dementors in Harry Potter. Oh, there's Dragons in Harry Potter. There's Quidditch in Harry Potter. We need to put that all in one ride. And it's a terrible story, really. But it's a fun time. It's a great time. It's a Like the cat in the hat. Which one? The ride or the movie? The movie. Yeah, sure. Um, and then Gringotts, it's like, okay, we're married to this one scene from the books. Let's translate that. Do something, show another side of it that wasn't canonical, but it's still pretty attached to that story. Right. Whereas this, it's like, we're not even, forget Harry Potter, he doesn't matter. You're a student here, let you experience all that, and I think the Q kind of took that liberation as well. This is totally off books from the Q, but Hagrid is a hog. I mean, he he's in the most Harry Potter rides yeah. of all of them. He runs Flight of the Hippogriff, he runs his Magical Creatures class, he makes an extended cameo in Forbidden Journey, and his motorbike is parked right outside of Gringotts Wizarding Bank. I mean, this dude. Yeah, and don't forget, everywhere. don't forget the motorbike uh, in Port of Entry. That's true. I don't think that's his, <clears throat> but it's still. Yeah, Hagrid, I mean, he just takes over every ride that he's near. Yeah. You know, when I go on Hagrid's, you know, I, I think it's a wonderful time, and I think life's a happy song, especially because when you're on the ride, you've got someone to sing along with. Um, and this is a, a segue. You know what we're segueing into? We're segueing into the music, although that was definitely very rough. This is not Hagrid, Rub this is not Rubius Hagrid's sing-along blog, but <laughs> there, is, Hagrid's most wanted. <laughs> there is a lot of good music on this ride. And a lot of great sound. Compared sound. to something like Forbidden Journey, which has no musical score. I mean, if you rode this and there was no musical score while you were flying over the water, it would not be the same experience. Like, music highlights so many of the moments, and the fact that there is constant music and sound makes moments like the motorbike sputtering out on yeah. the spike 
all the more powerful because all of a sudden everything cuts out. It's pure stop and Hagrid's like, oh, you lost power. Bum, bum, bum. And then you start going backwards. And like even when Hagrid's magic feels, there's like a ba na 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 It's like, you know, it's like, sorry, I've never been great shakes at magic. Yeah. Um, so the music really enhances not only the exciting and the magical about the ride, but also the humorous beats. Yeah. Like, and it's that's something that you really don't see a whole lot on theme park attractions. You know, there's a different tone to the forbidden to the music when you're in the Forbidden Forest show building. Yeah. And uh, even you know the lighting effects associated with the devil snare and the falling. Every all that is backed by amazing sound. And even you know once you hit dragon fire. The music, da -da 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 like it's all there to bring that experience together, all the way down to the classic Harry Potter theme as you're flowing by the unicorns and Hagrid's like, oh look, she's a mum, and it's just, <laughs> it's it's just it's just, it's really a testament to how well the sound design is for the attraction. Even the festivals at the beginning, which you can hear, that but you can't see. And every time, like as soon as the motorbike takes off for the first time, you hear the engine roar. And every time you go through a launch, you're hearing the engine roar. It's just, the sound design for this ride is absolutely impeccable. Yeah, and that would, it would have, um, words are hard. Uh, that would not have been a thing necessarily, I mean, it's, a, it's still a thing to celebrate, but it would have taken away if they would go through all that work and the speakers have lasted. Right. Like, I've been on the Hulk where, the music ain't working or the it sounds all muddy because they blew the speaker out. Right. So they gotta replace that or whatever they do. I've not been on Hagrid's with the speaker busted yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think with the sound design, again, yeah, totally. Like uh, even the stuff like the Pixies, where it's yeah, it's something designed well design. enough that you can it sounds like the Pixies are coming off, you know, from the side of the track on the Ford Anglia where they are. It's yeah. not like the Pixies are, oh, they're right in front of me. It's like the way, it's, it's just very clever. Yeah, and it's crazy too, because that's all from your ride vehicle, yeah. I think for I the most part, yeah. Exterior one, yeah. There is some, there is exterior. Fluffy. Well, Fluffy might be a little bit of exterior, but when the bikes go by the entrance, they have extra base that boosts it so that you can hear the bikes like from out in Hogsmeade. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. That's yeah, that's definitely not coming from the ride vehicle. Yeah, it's like as it goes right by the entrance. But yeah, for the most part. Oh, and there's also some off-board sound when Hagrid is uh, in the hut when he's talking oh, yeah. to you. That's coming from. That's more closed off. Right. Because it, they want to make it sound like it's coming from him versus he's talking over the intercom to your ride vehicle like he is for most of the ride. Yeah. Um. It's less of an issue now, but definitely when it opened, it was kind of hard to hear Hagrid. Yeah, definitely. Like, I definitely, first tried, I was like, I couldn't tell anything. Was, I didn't know to push the button or anything like that. Yeah, I didn't know to push the button and push the button until um, I watched the ride video. Yeah. And I guess someone had her really close to the speaker, and it's like, ah, all right, push the purple button. And because I didn't notice that in the queue, even though it's like highlighted very much now that I know that that's a thing, I see, oh yeah, they highlighted the purple button. Um, it's not like the red button is what they like implant in your mind when you're in Men in Black, and then if you're paying attention, you hear push the red button. But still, you know that's a thing. Yeah. Um, that's not such a thing in Hagrid's. So I've ridden it with people where they're in the motorbike seat. I'm in a little sidecar, and uh, it's like, all right, push push the button in front of you, and they don't because they can't hear. One because right. they're still in shock that they just fell 15 feet, um, <laughs> and the other because. Uh, of the volume of it, which right. is it's at, a, it's at a good volume. It's not the most clear volume all the time, um, but still the whole design of it I think is is good. It's just every now and again, definitely the first try, you won't pick everything up. Yeah, I don't know if that's a universal sure. fault or if that's just the thing you are supposed to catch on multiple rides. Because when you first ride, there's such a sensory overload. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but later on, now that you've become accustomed to some of the things. You can start to pick up like, oh, Arthur warned me about those bikes, which you've heard during the pre-show. He's like, those bikes are, might not be quite as sturdy as the original, but I didn't think they'd take you into the Forbidden Forest. Just hang on, you know, it's yeah. like. And you catch enough, I, I don't want to like take it away. It's like, oh man, the sound design is off, or the sound volume is so awful that you can't hear anything the first time. But the ride is you... so quiet too, that it allows the sound to come through. This is true. Um, but even like, 
you still pick up important things. Like, hang on, just hang on. You, you catch that. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm hanging on. Are we going backwards? And you'll yeah. definitely hear, oh, look, she's a mom. Yeah, because by then the whole thing is just, yeah, you chill down. And you're all, also, maybe it's not the right fault because I scream every time I'm on it because I'm having such a blast. Okay. Maybe point blast it. ended screw. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, Luma Salem, you know all that jazz. Um, so I think actually, you know, part of it, I'm screaming so loud, I don't care to hear Hagrid. So never mind. Point to Hagrid. Yeah, but absolutely, I think this ride surpasses both Gringotts and Forbidden Journey as far as its music and sound design. There's still yeah. parts of Gringotts that I think are excellent, like flying bum, bum, down the bum, 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 bum. Yeah, especially, you know, Voldemort coming in, da 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 and then the whole uh, goodbye of Friends theme from Harry Potter playing at the end. There's I Gringotts, love the 4CTC mode. Gringotts has a lot of fantastic musical moments, but I think Hagrid's as a whole, as far as the musical and uh, sound package, I think it delivers even better than yeah, Gringotts. And it's long. It is very long. It's a long ride, and it's... It's shorter than Gringotts, but for the type of it's ride that it is, yeah, it feels longer. I think because Gringotts stops a lot. Yeah, Gringotts has a much shorter track layout. I think Gringotts is maybe oh, it feels like it. <laughs> maybe two thousand feet of track, whereas Hagrid's is, I think, the longest coaster in Florida. Oh yeah, yeah, Multi so, multiple thousands. Yes, but yeah, so that's the music. <laughs> so the last segment for our Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure review is, of course. Thrills. Thrill. And I, I, do we even need to talk about this? This ride, Thrills. it's got the drop track, it's drop. got seven launches. Seven? Seven. And it's also- Only seven? Only seven, the most of any coaster in the world. Wow! This thing's got turns, it's got ups and downs, it feels like you're on an out of control motorbike. It really does. The last launch is superb. This thing delivers on the thrills that it promises. We talked about how Forbidden Journey had greater thrills than Gringotts, but this obviously has greater thrills than Forbidden Journey. Yeah, it's like, it's like not even a question. I mean, it meets, it meets those flying expectations of fly, birdie, fly, but it... <laughs> um, this meets those motorbike expectations. And, you know, you mentioned launches, and I'm not a huge fan of the launch sensation. I go on the Hulk, and that's the part that I dread the most because it is so intense, even though it's like 1G. It, it, it really throws you for a loop, um, li literally. You'd go into a corkscrew then in a loop. That was accidental. Um, and even on Revenge of the Mummy, I, I, I'm always like tense when we're going up that launch hill because I'm like, uh, it's gonna be just like the Hulk, and then you're gonna get airtime, which airtime's great, but it can be a rock and ride. Even even Cheetah Hunt, I like tense up a bit because it starts so suddenly. With Hagrid's, I, I'm, it, it's not as intense. Yeah, it's more fun. Well, it also goes back to the pacing and the build. Like the first launch out of the station isn't. 50 miles per hour, and then the ride yeah. is slow. Like it's, like it's a, a very, Space Mountain 20. Uh, yeah, maybe 20 mile per hour launch, and then you go around a curve and you hit another launch. Like the launches are very well paced. Yeah, and none of it distracts from what's going on either. It's not like you're building up to these launches. These launches happen at very organic points in time, I feel like. Yeah. Um, and of course, you have the spike, you have the drop, which we've talked about. The instantaneous time. switch to go backwards. Yeah, and that's that's like an invisible effect. You know, I don't notice that. I don't realize that, and that's part of that thrilling feeling of being on a runaway motorbike. Like Big Thunder Mountain's a runaway mine train. You're on a very linear track, and there's not much to trick you into thinking that you're not on a runaway mine train that just left the station. And, oh, things went wrong. Right. It's like it starts out good, and then you take a crazy, you know, maneuver, and the next thing you know, you're going up, and then you're going down. And then you're on a totally different track. It's something you don't realize, and it's something you do realize when you go on Cheetah Hunt. It's something you realize when you go on Expedition Big Everest, where you're just sitting there like, oh, all right, we're sitting here for 30 minutes waiting for the track to switch. Yeah, and I haven't been on Expedition Everest, but I've seen videos, and you feel that just watching the videos. Like, ooh, yeah. what's going to happen? Um, and you know, obviously, you're not going to go back down the same way, so. Yeah, and I think it's important. I think. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, and maybe we'll, we'll cut it, I don't know. Um, so maybe this is the first time we're talking about it. Um, but again, you have the motorbike, you have the sidecar, and both give different thrills. This is true. When you're on the motorbike, you're further above the track, so the tilting motions are much more uh, 
What's the word like? Uh, emphasize because you know you're further from the center of gravity of the train. Um, whereas if you're in the sidecar, it's it feels much more like you're on a traditional roller coaster, even like in a bobsled almost. Like yeah, it's it's a and person. It's yeah, yeah, I prefer the sidecar. Uh, not uh, mostly because. Uh, it allows me to feel where my phone is and make sure I'm not losing my phone on the Yeah, because there's, nice, there's a nice gap on if the, the right phone, side. If uh, the phone uh, falls out, it'll probably stay in the back seat. On a motorbike, that's probably. That's gone, yeah. But no, I really do like the sidecar better for the experience because I like the feeling of being close to the track. But a lot of people like the feeling of the motorbike as well. And you also get that added thrill of feeling that the last launch is actually triggered by you pushing the button, which is something yeah. that neither Forbidden Journey nor Gringotts have as far as interactivity. No. Again, as we said earlier, Neither Forbidden Journey or Gringotts really puts any agency on the rider, whereas in Hagrid's, honestly, the agency is almost entirely on the, not entirely, but 90% of it feels like this is your story that you're experiencing, it's all yours, and you really feel that on the thrill, yeah, you're not driving, it's magic that's doing it, it's magical motorbike right. uh, with magical creatures, um, but still, you're pressing the button. You choose what part of the ride. I mean, unless you're single riders, yeah. and then you can kind of negotiate with the person you're in line with. Um, Slip them a twenty usually works. It's true. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, you've got the button. You've got that thrill of holding onto the the motorbike handles. Which, by the way, if you go on this ride and you sit in the motorbike, hold on to the handlebars. Don't hold on the lap bar. It's going to hold you. It's comfy. It's it's, it's secure, you ain't going anywhere. Just hold on to the motorbike and experience the, the adventure. I don't know why people like, go, oh, yep, uh, there's handlebars, but I'm not gonna touch them, I'm just gonna you know, go side to side. Don't do that. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're missing out a lot of the thrill. Yeah, um, the thrill of feeling like you're driving. And like my first drive, which I said was at night, in the front row, heck yeah, I held on to the handles, and I was like, it was like driving a motorbike. It was very cool. Yeah, but as you're saying with the, the sidecar, that's closer to the track, so, and it's closer to the water, too. So, like, as you're saying, that scene where you are, like, hovering over, and you basically go like this uh, over the water, you can, like, almost touch it, and you you feel the speed a lot more there, I think. Definitely. Um, and that's also during the last launch, you feel like you're going faster because you're so close to the ground. You have trees on both sides. You have the dragon fire effect right next to you, and it all adds to make everything just hit even better yeah. from a thrill perspective. I agree. So I think it's the most thrilling ride of the Wizarding World. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, we haven't been keeping score. We haven't. Yeah, but I guess score aside, because you can do that in the edit, find out, what, you know, figure out the numbers. Yeah. Um, but where does this ride rank for you as far as the Wizarding World goes? I would say it's definitely my favorite ride, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say it's the best ride. Like, I, I still think that Gringotts as a ride Especially taking into account the queue and the entire experience, like, you know, how you get there. You walk down Diagon Alley, you see the dragon, you enter the queue, you know, you have all the goblins. I think that Gringotts as a whole is a much better package, but Hagrid's is so much more fun of a ride. Like, it is a absolute blast. It's non-stop action thrills, and it has the humor, it has the music, and I could definitely see myself riding Gringotts, or I can definitely see myself riding Hagrid's on repeat more than I can see myself riding Gringotts on repeat. Yeah, um, definitely, like, I would wait another, I, for a few more times, I'd wait another 90 minutes for Hagrid's. I, I won't get in line for Gringotts if it's above 45. Yeah, me neither. Um, great, especially because, you know, Gringotts works so well with that 30 minute queue. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I guess that is a benefit of Hagrid's longer queue and putting the pre-show there is it does keep the intrigue for the constant 90 minute lines yeah. and spreads things out. But I think once they actually get the ride up and running and they just start skipping the pre-show on a regular basis because the line is going to be so efficient once yeah. they actually get it working. I just hope they don't cut that pre-show entirely. That would be a darn shame. That really would. To put all that work in that pre-show and then cut it. I think when the To lines... even get Robbie Coltrane back on his feet. Yeah. Um, and even to get the guy who plays, I'm sorry I'm forgetting his name, but the guy who plays Arthur Weasley. You know, the Weasleys have really been benefiting from this whole theme park expansion, I'm not going to lie. Absolutely. Um, so it's great seeing him there, and they're both giving it their all, and the effects are really cool. I mean, it's like a, it's not a pre-show, I mean, it's similar to other pre-shows, namely Gringotts, but um, it feels interactive in a way that the others don't. 
because you know Green Dust feels like disaster. Right. You know, it's using the same effects as disaster, um, and it feels like you're watching maybe not a movie, but you're definitely not interacting with Bill. You're Absolutely. not interacting with Blordak. You don't even. I heard, I hardly catch Blordak's name until we uh, until Seth until yeah. Seth Kabersky, uh told us or you already knew. But for me, it was I'm like, who's Blordak? Who the heck's Blordak? Yeah. And then you're like, oh, it's the goblin. I'm like, he has a name? Yeah. Um, whereas, uh... With Hagrid, you know the characters and they're with you the entire... It feels like their actions are directly impacting you all the way down to... Yeah, even with the water getting on you. Yeah, like, and even Is on, everyone all right, you know? But yeah, even on Hagrid's, when like Hagrid tries to repair your bike and he says Reparo and you hear the sound effect and then it actually launches you further backwards. Yeah. Like, you feel like the character's actions are having a direct... Now, don't get me wrong, Gringotts does the same thing, and I think one of the greatest effects is when Bellatrix Lestrange pulls out her wand and zaps you, and that is a very uh, interactive moment. And the same when Bill Weasley uh, whisks his wand and says, uh, what is it, Wingardium Leviosa, it's a perfectly timed effect, so it feels true. like uh, your curse. But I also think Hagrid's does um, a better job because the the actual impact of the various things that you're hearing are like bigger things, like launches versus, uh, you know, just the car starts to move again. Yeah. Back to what you're saying about uh, uh, Gringotts and how it's the better story package. Um, I agree with that, but yeah, I'm re saying it's the same point because I think Hagrid's is the better experience. And I think, yeah, just going back to, and this is another point you brought up in the Q section, but nothing's gonna compare to walking into Gringotts Bank for the first time and seeing the huge, and I get that you're obviously not gonna have that because of the setting of where Hagrid's is, mm -hmm. but even though it's hard to compare, there's just, nothing's gonna compare to walking into the Gringotts lobby, seeing the goblins, having the goblin talking at the end. It's such a massive, impressive space. And after, you know, you're coming in from seeing the dragon, which actually breathes fire on the outside. And like you said, it's definitely something unique for the Wizarding World. And it's very quaint. I just don't think it can compete from a visual standpoint. Yeah. Um, and I guess going on to another question, where is this rank as far as Universal and maybe Orlando as a whole? For me, I want to say it's... Like, as far as favorite rides, it's right up there with um, Tower of Terror and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Um, I'm actually one of the people who really like Smuggler's Run and think that it's possibly the best new attraction Disney's gotten in a while, especially since I'm able to ride it a lot more. I've been riding it yet, but I'll agree on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've been able to ride it a lot more than Flight of Passage. And also on Flight of Passage, I found that my rides are less consistently great when it's fully working. Um, it's fantastic, but there are a lot of times recently where I've ridden and the water effects aren't working, or uh, like I sit in just a, a spot where the 3D isn't working as well. Um, and those issues have kind of uh, tainted my view of the ride a little bit. Now, for people who've gotten a perfect ride every time, I can absolutely see why they think it's the best. But I think, especially with, this is going off topic, but with Hagrid's and with Smuggler's Run, your seats are almost consistently great. There's not ever a, oh, if you sit on this seat on Hagrid's, you're going to get a bad experience. Right. Or you'll get a different experience from whatever. Right. I've not sat in the back yet. Right, but it's not necessarily bad. No. Like, if you sat, like, you know, on the bottom row of Soren on the side, it's obviously going to be bad. And I think we talked about uh, the good seats versus the bad seats a little bit in our upcoming Kong video. Yeah. Uh, where one of the things that drags mm -hmm. Kong down is the fact that the perfect seat is in the center. And if you sit on the sides, especially during the final scene, you're going to see, you know, the edges. the edges of the screen, which is something that's definitely not true of Smuggler's Run, and also not true of Hagrid's, because any immersion issues that Hagrid's has, which it barely has any, you're going to see from all the scenes. It's not, yeah, it doesn't vary. And it's, I'm not one to harp on Universal's use of screens, because it's all about how is the best way to tell the story. Um, even with something like Supercharged, which it could have been told through more practical effects. You know, I went on Test Track for the first time last week, and I'm like, oh, yeah. This is you, what you everybody could have was thinking, yeah. Yeah. Um, you could have integrated a story with this kind of, of system. Maybe even this story, too. Um, I still understand how they saw that as the solution uh, to telling that story. So I'm not one to harp on screens, but having the, those uh, practical effects, having those animatronics and, or animated figures, that's what they call them. They're not animatronics, they're animated figures. 
um, and practical sets and, and even statues. Um, it's a really nice change of pace. I think overall I would say that Hagrid's for Universal is a great um, refresher, even and in some ways a palate cleanser. Um, in, in all the ways, a palate cleanser for the normal storytelling tropes of, of Universal. It's a palate cleanser in the Wizarding World. Um, it's a great palate cleanser for the type of ride they make. And it's a palate cleanser for roller coasters too. It's like, whoa, they they told a story, a pretty good story, in a roller coaster and it felt organic. Absolutely, and it has a solid it has solid setups and payoffs. It brings you to an awesome conclusion. You know, one of the other last things I have to talk about with uh, Hagrid's is the fact that I can get a Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure t-shirt. I can't get one for Gringotts, and I can't get no. one for Forbidden Journey. Yeah. So it doesn't really make sense, especially when Hagrid tells you at the end of the ride, I'd really appreciate it if you don't tell anybody about Hog uh, back at Hogwarts about this. But everyone and then knows. he sells t-shirts showing everything that you encountered on the ride, including... There's probably some Slytherin just Fluffy. to get an extra, you know, buck out, you know. You sure it's Slytherin making the merchandise, trying to sabotage Hagrid? No, not sabotage, just make a profit. Okay, okay. Sorry I just, for I just, Slytherins, I I just know, think but... it's weird that Hagrid sells his own merch. Yeah, sure. But, well, well, I mean, I he deserves it because, in my opinion, it's the best ride at Universal Resort. Even better than Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man gets, it's, it even gets better every time I ride because I notice something new. After there's riding so for much 10 years, 10 years, I'm noticing new things. Even, you know, there's only one update I'm noticing new things. Um, Hagrid's is above that for me. Um, and even in the Orlando area, the only ride that tops it for me is Haunted Mansion because that has so many great tricks and it feels very lived in. Hagrid's feels lived in, but not as much as like Mansion, and Mansion has different things. Um, but Hagrid's is definitely the best roller coaster here, I think. Absolutely. I love Manta, and Hagrid's is the best roller coaster for me here in Florida. I think, yeah, as far as roller coasters, I don't think it's gonna top Mako or Manta for me as far as a pure roller coaster, sure. but it is a heck of a fun ride. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're not going to top the sensation of Manta diving into the pretzel loop and feeling your body flip. Or even the, just the flip, the corkscrews yeah. on that. But that's not what Hagrid's is trying to do. And I think for what Hagrid's is trying to do, it succeeds on absolutely every level. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's a good place to end it. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching our review of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Stay tuned to Theme Park Workshop for more videos in the future. We have lots of new content that's going to be coming out. You know how you can figure that stuff out? Go to the subscribe, or is it over there? This is the first time I've done this. Uh, yeah. Find the bell icon below. Ring a ding a ding. Find the bell icon below, and make sure you get notifications, because we are going to start posting more as of right now. Thank you so much for now? watching. Now? We're doing it now? Right now! <laughs> we'll see you next time on Theme Park Workshop. <laughs> <laughs>